Hello and welcome to Victor George Leather Goods YouTube. My name is George and today we have a fun and unique build ahead of us. It's a magnet retention scabbard. No need for a safety strap on this one. I'm going to show you everything from the pattern making process to cover every single step along the fabrication way. So this is not recommended. This is just to show you if its potential and um, that is what the final product will look like. So let's get started. Let's draw the foundation for this knife sheath. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, cardstock paper and uh, we're going to have something to elevate the paper off of the table. This portion right here needs to be a perfect square. Flush up against that. We're going to take our knife and we're going to center that and the blade is to the right for a right hand draw sheet. And now I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use pen so that you can see the pattern a little bit better. And we're going to trace out the knife. Okay, once we have that, let's clean up any lines that we need to. All right, now we have the blade shape on paper. Now I'm gonna do a half inch seam around this That'll give me the option of a single or a double row stitching. Uh, plus, I like a, a beefier looking sheath. So the way I do this, you can do it however you like, is I take my um, graph ruler, has a prominent half inch center line in the middle. I place it along the edge and I walk a pen line around it. And we'll try to do this as quick as I can but this is truly the crucial stage for this knife sheet to come out fine. Okay, as I walk it around, it develops a little shadow line. I don't have to connect the dots later. Just something that uh, I've done for forever and I just can't get away from it. Okay, so now we have the outline of the sheath face and uh, you can take a pen and uh, clean up a little bit of these lines. That's usually good enough for me to uh, cut out. So we're gonna cut this out and um, then uh, I already did that, save a little bit of time. So once you cut out the pattern, the next step is to take a self-centering ruler and find the exact center of the top of the knife sheath face, put a little bit of a tick there. Now what I do is I take another piece of poster board, four inches with a two inch reference line. And um, this also has a true square edge. To get the center line for the sheath, this is the way I do it. So I take the sheath and I line it up on that line and I make sure both edges of that flush edge line up. I take this center line, I mark my sheath, and then I just connect these lines and that gives me my center line for the sheath. Okay, now we take our back piece, and we're gonna lay this sheath and we're gonna match those two lines. 
So the center of the sheath line and the reference line on the paper and just trace around the pattern. This will make sure that it's all symmetrical and uh, really is an important step of the pattern process. All right, so now we have that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, a ruler and from the corners of the sheath, we're gonna draw a straight line using that reference line as a guide. That's a little weak. Okay, we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, now once we have that, then we will take from the top of the sheath face and I go a quarter of an inch and I draw a line across there. And like I always say, just make sure your horizontal and vertical lines always line up, because that'll translate well into a quality sheath. So with that quarter line, quarter inch line above the sheath face, now I take a two inch wide ruler and I'm just gonna draw four two inch blocks. All right, this part here, so we need four blocks of two inch, one, two, three, four, and then I'm just gonna cut off this excess so it doesn't mess with my brain. Okay, now we have that. Now we're gonna take a radius, if I can find it real quick. All right, found my radius curve. This is a three and a half inch Template. Now, in block number one from the sheath face, I'm gonna take this and from this corner to this corner, I'm gonna bring it up there and I'm gonna do the best I can to intersect these corners perfectly. Then I go to the third block and I do the same thing. Okay. Turn it over, replicate that on the other side. All right, so now that we have those uh, inside curves drawn in, this center block here is our fold back, our turn back. It's a two inch block, so I'm gonna split it right down the middle with my one inch wide ruler. And that's gonna be the fold back. All right, so now we have the pattern uh, complete and we're going to cut this out. And we have all of our patterns drawn up and uh, we'll show you the next step. All right, so now that we have this, we have to add a little something here towards the end. This uh, back piece is gonna fold into itself, and so we need to skive to feather this end. So I usually take about an inch, and uh, from the very end here, and from this area down, it's all gonna be skive to feather. So now that we have the sheath, I'm gonna show you the orientation for the right hand um, uh, knife sheath so that we make sure that we don't accidentally cut a left-handed sheath 
like I've done many times. Okay, so this pattern right here is ready. I always cut from the grain side on leather, so I know that this pattern is good for a um, right hand strong knife scabbard. So I'm just gonna write on here, uh, grain side up with an arrow and a right hand sheath. So I know that that's set up, so whenever I lay that onto my leather, this is going on the grain side. Now this is the back piece, and this is actually the flesh side. So I will turn this over. Grab it, there we go. And I will write on here, same thing, grain up and right hand. So that way I know how to orientate that to my leather. All right, so now let's take these patterns and cut them to leather. And I also want to show you that you'll need two additional pieces cut from this same pattern piece for the magnetic um, uh, strips that I'm gonna show you here in just a second. So now, uh, before I commit this pattern to uh, leather, I fold it into itself, I place the pattern together and set the knife on there and I can see that the knife handle is directly centered of the belt loop. I'm happy with this and we're gonna go ahead and cut it to leather now, okay? So, using these pattern pieces, we're gonna cut out our components. The back and the front face are cut out of veg tan leather, good temper, and probably in the six to seven ounce range. Now we're gonna have a pretty thick knife sheath with all these layers, so we wanna make sure that, uh, that we're not going too, too bulky. All right, so once we cut these two pieces out, we're gonna need two more for our magnetic retention. Using the same pattern piece, we're gonna cut another one out of about five ounce leather, veg tan also, and uh, I will show you how I actually do this when we get to the building stage. But this is the one where the magnets are going to be um, sandwiched between this four ounce backing piece. Okay, so what I use for the magnetic retention are these badge magnets. These are available at uh, hobby type stores and um, they are perfect for this style of build because the magnets are attached to a little plate. All right, so these are the pieces that we're gonna need. And the first thing that I'm gonna work on in the next clip is the retention of the magnets. Let's jump into it. Okay, now to make the internal magnet uh, sandwich, so to speak, for inside the knife sheath, what I do is I cut out a piece of sheath face from the actual pattern itself, and then I lay the knife on in the center, and then that way I know where I need to punch my 3 8 inch holes. Um, I wanna make sure that they are contacting leather. Now, the reason for the weight of this leather is um, it's important because the magnets need to be uh, subsurface or slightly reset. So what I do is I moisten the leather and then I just take my magnet bar here and I press it in. I see where I need to cut and then I do so. So they're gonna be on the inside of the sheath and uh, just for mock-up demonstration purposes, this is how they're gonna look on the front. Okay, so you're gonna have your magnets that are recessed so that the knife, when it's inside the sheath, will all have magnetic contact, but no metal to metal contact, okay? So that's where that is. Now we take our, our super thin backing and we're gonna glue these pieces together. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll press on. We have sandwiched the uh, magnetic bars, the uh, rare earth magnets in between these two pieces of leather. They're all glued. Once I did that, I went ahead and just trimmed up with a little bit of sandpaper the edges to make everything flush. That'll help in the following steps. So now that I have that, we need to do a couple of things to it. So the first thing that I'm going to do 
is I'm going to edge the top all the way across and both sides. And I'm gonna take a little bit of water and then just burnish it. Okay, nice and smooth. We're gonna take uh, a little bit of dye because we won't be able to get to this later. So we're just gonna go all the way across the top with some dye. These little dye daubers are fantastic. Okay, we got that done and we're gonna run a little bit more over. Clean that up. You can work that a little bit more if you like. Now I'm gonna take a 1 8 inch wing divider and I'm gonna go just on the inside. This is where our welt's gonna be eventually, or glued to at least. And I'm gonna take it just on the inside of that welt. Now I'm gonna draw myself a little bit of a line. This is going to be sewn later. So just on the inside of this welt, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hand stitch this. Of course, if you wanna sew it by machine, then you can as well. And that's all I'm gonna need as far as the stitch line is concerned for a future step. This is all preparatory. So now this is going to be where our welt's gonna be glued to. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. I just take my scratcher and in preparation of future gluing, that's just one step. All right, so now this piece is complete and we're ready to move on to the next part of this build. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our sheath face and uh, we cut it out from the original pattern as well. The next thing that I went ahead and did is uh, I just scribed a line with my wing dividers, um, no rhyme or reason as to why, but um, on this half inch seam or welt area, I chose in this case to do a single row of stitching you can do a double row, which uh, looks very nice as well. So now you have all of this blank canvas here for you to decorate, and you can do a myriad of things. You can carve it, you can do a simple border stamp as on this original knife sheath, you can do your double row stitching, you can do a geometric pattern, basket weave, uh, dragon scales, anything that you would like. So now that we have that, now we need to work on our welt. So it's not a very thick bladed knife, so we're not gonna need a super thick welt. I, I believe this is the eight ounce welt. So I just take my pattern to my welting leather and I butt up these uh, edges flush. I trace out the actual knife sheath and I do have excess that I'll trim later. I place the knife in its position and then I trace the line around the knife itself and that will become my cutout. That is um, what I'm going to um, to use as the welt. All right so uh, once you do what you need to do on these and if you'll notice here too I put a small um, I punch a small hole at the very apex of that point and what that does is it um, prevents the leather from tearing out and gives the tip of the knife a little place to seat. All right, so now we have that. And uh, I have marked my stitch holes, four millimeter, um, and then I glued on the welt. So the important part is that the welt is nice and tight around the knife sheath or I'm sorry, around the knife. Uh, there's no room for play or wobble or wiggle or anything like that. That's what you want in a welt. And once that's sewn down onto the main piece, that will be locked in there in addition to the magnetic retention. All right, let's go on to the next step. You'll notice that I've already placed my stitching holes through this uh, front welted piece. And I did that 
with a Dremel drill press. And that is um, kind of frowned upon in leather circles, but I've always had the philosophy of use whatever works. And with a half inch welt, this works. I've used it for years. Um, the, the, there is no problem with that. Use what you have. And uh, I'll show you how I do that to get what I consider to be a professional stitch with a drill press. Moving on now to the back piece, the back strap. So um, what I do is as soon as I cut it out from the hide, I will take a little bit of sandpaper and I will smooth out any irregularities in my cuts. Once I do that, then I can take my edger to the top and bottom of this piece here above the, um, the sheath body and uh, moisten, burnish, dye, and burnish like I did here on this end because once the fabrication or the actual assembly comes, we won't be able to get to that. So uh, burnish that to the level that you would like and we also need to skive to feather. Now this is a glass tile that I picked up from Home Depot that I use for my watch bands. But the point of it is anytime you skive, you should always skive to glass or marble. Several tools you can use. You can use a skiving knife. You can use a safety skife. You can use a French edger. And um, if you're new to the game, or a knife maker that uh, dabbles in some sheath work, you don't have all the tools, you can even take this and uh, take it to your two by 72, put it behind uh, or on top of a piece of wood, or you can use a sanding block and you can sand to feather. Um, whatever works, staying with that theory, I did that many, many times uh, when I was first starting. And uh, just remember, there's no rules. One step at a time, we're getting closer. Okay, so now take the back panel of your sheath, the flesh side, and fold this end in. So if your pattern was made correctly and you followed all the steps, you should have a perfect inside curve on both ends. And now you set this down. And um, the way to do this is uh, it does help to moisten the inside depending on how thick your leather is. This is kind of a mock-up, so it's a little bit thinner, thinner leather. All right, so now we have that set there. We're going to take our magnet piece. And we're going to set it at that quarter inch line that we first drew on the pattern. And we're gonna set it on there. And we're gonna match up, basically flush up the edges with the back piece. So now that we know that it's perfectly symmetrical based on our original patterns, we're gonna take an awl and you're gonna scribe a line right where that meets up. All right, you take that off and um, and then you apply glue to that. Of course, it's been scratched first. You take the back of the magnet panel and uh, you match the size of this to that. And you're gonna go ahead and just glue right now this piece, but you can go ahead and sand in preparation for the final gluing um, while you're at it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this piece right here. I'm going to glue those together. And uh, then we are on to the final step of gluing the face piece on with the welt and uh, the final trim work and all that good stuff. And then we'll be close to done. Okay, so now we're ready. We went ahead and glued the magnetic panel onto the end that was skived and sewed it on and it's now all prepped for final gluing. So I drew some lines at the, at the corners here where we're going to stick it together and it's all ready to be tacked together. And we're just gonna match those lines up. 
keep the edges together. And then walk it down. Keep those edges as flush as you can. All right, now we're just gonna do a double check before we put that top on. And we have center. Everything's working according to the pattern. So now all that we have left to do is trim this back a little bit, even it all up, glue the welt and the front face on. I'm gonna drill it out, show you how I do that. And then we're gonna dye it probably airbrush it, and then uh, do the final sewing. All right, we are really close now. All we have left to do is uh, put the front face of the sheath onto the other pieces that are stacking up, and uh, the welt looks good. And uh, I think we're ready to press this together. So, match the top two pieces. so that they butt up. Hold your fingers on the side and press it down. And it looks like we have a good fit. The corners meet. Everything looks good. Okay, now we're just gonna let that uh, cure and uh, then once that's cured, I will be back and show you how I use the Dremel drill press to drill out the holes. And then we'll do the final sewing and dyeing, and I think we are good to go. I just wanted to give you an alternative method to um, gluing and sewing the magnet sandwich, so to speak, onto the back panel. And uh, that would be to just sew it at this point straight through to the back. If uh, those stitches on the back don't bother you, um, then you can do it that way instead of like I demonstrated in the other clips. I, and then of course, you know, you would sew your uh, welted top piece onto that and then sew it like I'm gonna show in the next clip or so. But anyway, I personally like the lack of stitches across. Um, I like the hidden stitches inside. It's a little mystery stitches or whatever you want to call it. That's just my personal view. But I did want to show you that easier way to do it. All right, let's get on to sewing this thing. So if you don't have a large industrial sewing machine like a Class 4 or a Bull Ferdinand or one of those hand crank uh, machines, to drill holes or to cut holes through a half an inch welt like this um, without... A lot of experience is very difficult to do. So I've used a Dremel drill press for as long as I can remember. I find them to be very useful in the leather shop, especially for this application. So a couple of things real quick. The plug that you saved, I put that in there so that when I'm squeezing on the sheath, it doesn't collapse in and change the um, the angle of the uh, of the stitch holes. So. Couple of things, the sheath has to be completely dry. I also let, if I use contact cement, I let the contact cement cure for a while before I drill it out because otherwise you'll get some gumballs on your drill uh, bit. So speaking of bit, you use a 1 16th inch Dremel or a, a drill bit. Some people have said to use a needle, uh, a sewing needle of the same size, but I find that they spin too fast and actually will burn the inside of the holes. So another thing is speed is very important. That's why the variable speed is so nice. If it's too fast, you're gonna burn the leather. If it's too slow, you're gonna get bogged down into the leather. So you have to practice, um, get find a speed that works for you. Um, also, it's very handy for me to have a, a light. So I just take a little flashlight and clip it to the unit. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and drill some holes, 
And um, so the, the key is to have the drill bit approximately eighth of an inch above, have a good stable surface. And when you're drilling, hold it completely flat. And, um, and then just go straight into the holes that are made by your stitching um, uh, iron, okay? So I'm gonna drill a few holes and then uh, show you the back of it and then uh, we'll start on the sewing prop, uh, process and uh, we'll do it. All right, here we go. All right, I think you get the idea. And um, if you'll look at what I've done so far, see if I'm in the frame, you can see that the, the holes are straight. Um, they follow the true path of the front stitches. And uh, you'll see when I do actually start sewing that uh, it'll be very difficult to tell that it was done this way. I went ahead and airbrushed the sheath golden brown so it'll contrast with the white stitches. The key to having a quality stitch line with the Dremel drilled holes is to use a braided thread size 1.0. Also the correct harness needle, uh, agai blunt tip needles that uh, fits the thread. So it's strong, fills up the holes and allows for a snug, tightly pulled stitch. Okay, I'm gonna pan back now and explain a few more things and um, we'll get this thing sewn up and prepare for the edge work. I am not one to show you the traditional method of saddle stitching. I learned many years ago always to sew away from me. I don't do an overcast stitch. Um, I don't usually groove my uh, stitch line because the modern thread of today, you can pull so snugly that uh, it, it is literally just barely subsurface. I've never had a problem with that. So anyway, uh, the key to this is um, just always start in the same side hole. Pull it through the front and then through the back. And there is some resistance there. So you know that this fills up the, uh, the holes and then just pull it snug and even each time and then start from the front. Coming from the back. And I'll show you the setup here that I have in my, my stitching vise in just a second. But you can, of course, sit, sit down and sew it by hand in your lap as well. So I'll do one more here. And again, just a good And these stitching pliers are really handy too. So anyway, the key again is consistency in how snugly you pull them. This thread is very strong um, with a four millimeter stitch spacing. Um, I usually achieve a really nice stitch line. Okay, let me show you the setup here. And um, primarily it is that I don't like clamping my leather sheath into the jaws of my clamp. I, either have a, a, a bar of some sort, this is aluminum, I stick inside the sheath. And um, one last thing is when you get to the top, I always back tack two and a half stitches because all the stress is right here at the very tip of the sheath. All right, hope that helps. We are at the home stretch. We have finished sewing the sheath. The edges on this side are still raw. I wanted to show you the difference. Um, this side here has been sanded, starting with an 80 grit flap wheel. Then I went to 150 grit flap wheel, and then 200, or basically 220, 320, 400, 600, and that's where I stopped at 600. You can go to 800, 1,000, you can make that a glass edge. I usually stop at 600. And uh, it's nothing but just a time-consuming, 
labor intensive process and you just got to do it. So let me just show you here the, uh, the start from your rough raw edge. All right, so that gives me um, a start, and then I'm gonna go off camera to the 150 grit, and then I'm gonna hand sand it, and then all we have left to do is um, edge it, dye the edges however you wanna do that, and um, then we will be finished. Now the edges have been sanded to my liking, and because it's such a thick, welted sheath, basically it's a holster, I'm gonna use uh, a number one Craft Tool Pro Edger and uh, take off the edge. If I had a one size larger, I'd probably go to that. Gives it a nice little rounded effect. All right, so I got my um, edges sanded, or I'm sorry, uh, edged, and uh, I think I'll take a little bit of sandpaper to this edge, clean that up just a little bit, and uh, then I'll dye it, and then I'll show you the final sheath. You can't smell that. Anyway, take your daubers, burn all the loose hairs off of it, give it a second, and then brush off all the excess char. <sighs> that will prevent those little hairs from sling and dye. I thought I was going to be done to show you, but I wanted to show you the dyeing. Now, I dye and wax my edges, and um, it's just I don't like using paint, but uh, here we go. So it's a three part process. The first is the center of the sheath of the welt and then come to do your rounded edges. And then just do coats until you get the shade that you want. I'm using the same golden brown. I think I kind of want to see the layers through this, but anyway, now that um, we have that dyed, I take a wax impregnated rub rag out of denim and a wax cake that I've made. I will show you that in a future tips video. And then it's just, you can use this motorized. You can, you can do whatever you wanna do. Anyway, I wanted to show you. I'm gonna rub a little bit of wax on there. All right, so that was just, what, 10, 15 seconds. It's already starting to look pretty smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this, and then I promise I will show you the final result. Okay, we finished the uh, knife sheath, magnet retention. It was a fun build, and um, from pattern, we have a perfectly centered knife handle. Everything's finished beautifully, and uh, this was um, a lot of fun to do. So. Anyway, hope you gained something from this. Use this as a platform for your future builds. And um, I just want to leave you with one thing, that with all the finishes that we have on the market today, don't forget, anything that you have available to you will work. All right. Have a great day, friends. When I used to dream about going to college, this is the way I always pictured it. Wait a minute. When did you dream about going to college? When I used to fall asleep in high school.